Hey guys, in today's video, I'm running heavy auxiliary power to the rear of the Spooky Jeep here so that I can run my hitch mounted winch. If you're new here, welcome to my channel and don't forget to subscribe. So off my winch here, I just have a plug and it's really nice. I'm gonna run a plug off the Jeep. Whenever I slide my winch into the hitch, it's as easy as that, I have power. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run power to the back here using a plug that looks like this here. Now this is a plug to run some heavy gauge wire in and it's good for running your winch. Now these plugs are also useful for having a set of jumper cables. By having a plug in the back and a set of these jumper cables, you can actually jump somebody from the back or you can put one of these in the front and you don't have to pop the hood to jump start somebody. So now since I'm gonna be running most of my wiring through the inside of the vehicle, we're gonna to need to remove all this plastic. Now this plastic is pretty simple to remove. It's just this, this small section down here, running all the way up to the front of the vehicle, but we are gonna to have to remove the seat belts as well as the base of the rear seat. Now the wire I'm gonna be using today is number two wire. I'm gonna be running this from my secondary battery all the way back to here. Now, how I'm gonna run it is it's gonna come off the battery into the cab all the way through to here. And then I'm gonna go into a power distribution block right here. Now the reason why I'm gonna do that and not just have a straight shot is I wanna be able to connect other things into this and then off the block and out somewhere. I haven't decided how I'm gonna get it out to the bumper yet. Now when I go through the firewall, I'm gonna drill out a big hole so I can run this big grommet here. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna run multiple things through that same hole. So once I get all my wiring done completely, everything will run through here, and then I don't gotta worry about it. I can tighten this up real good, and I'm gonna have a piece of wire loom that runs everything. Now it is important that you wanna shield your wire because any rub through on this wire is gonna cause a huge problem. So you wanna make sure that you use a good wire loom. This stuff here, you can buy it in bulk. You can get a lot of it and it works out all right. If you're interested in any of the items that I'm using here today, you can check out the link in the description down below. All right, so I think I've decided where I wanna mount my little power distribution block here, my bus bar. I think I'm gonna mount it right up underneath here and it'll give me a good spot. This here is already a screw that goes through here. So I can just remove this, send a bolt on through it, and it should mount up perfectly right here. It'll clear the seatbelt by a bit, and it should give me plenty of clearance. So if you watched any of my previous videos, you might know that I really like solid soldered connections. So I'm gonna go ahead and solder a connector onto this, and I'll be right back. So now that I know where I want my wire to go, I'm gonna start feeding my wire through, and I'm also gonna start putting the wire loom on as I'm feeding it back. All right, so now that I got a sufficient amount through, I'm gonna go ahead and attach this where it's gonna attach on the distribution block. All right. So we got this portion taken care of. Now we just got to finish up over there. So where I've decided to go through my firewall at, there's a spot just above the original wire loom here. You can see it's where I got my pilot hole drilled. But this little plate here is where is where your clutch master cylinder would go on a manual transmission. All right, so now that I'm through the firewall, I'm gonna go ahead and run this over to my battery so I can see how long I need to be, cut it, and then put my wire loom on from there to the battery. All 
All right, now all I gotta do is wrap it around on my battery and secure it down. So in the kit with the plugs, it'll come with a couple of these as well as some connectors. Now these connectors only go in one way, so make sure that you put them in there the right way. And me being that I like solder, I'm gonna go ahead and solder these connectors in. But in order to keep it as clean as possible, what I'm gonna do first is wrap them in some tin foil. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my fire going here. I'm gonna heat up our connector, as well as get a little bit of heat on our wire, fill this up with solder, push our wire down in. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Once you're done, it's always a good idea to give it a good tug. Perfect, now all we gotta do is repeat that process for our ground. So once you got all your connectors soldered on, you wanna slide them into your clip here, and you wanna make sure that your negative goes with your negative, and your positive goes with your positive. Otherwise, you're gonna be all kinds of screwed up. Now, on these pins here, there's a piece that looks like it has a catch, and this side here, this rounded side, is your contact side. And then the part that looks like it catches actually catches on a metal piece inside your clip. So I don't know how well you can see, but right here there's a plastic plug that goes through and into the back side here. And that's where I'm gonna run my power wire. It's just gonna come up through here in and attach. It's nice clean. I don't have to go through anything else. It's great. Don't got to drill any more holes. Now, it's going to be long enough that I can run it down and around and underneath. And there's enough space back here that it won't interfere with the hatch. Now, as always, it's important that we don't forget our wire loom. We don't want any rub through. So what I'm going to do first is figure out roughly how much I need. Add it on before I feed it through. Now these normally come with hardware. The hardware is pretty cheap. It's also got a little hex space in here to keep your bolt from turning. Doesn't usually work, it just ends up spinning in there. So I'm gonna use some bolts to hard mount this when I get my bumper on. But for temporary, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some tech screws and mount it right up here. Now for your ground, you want to ground somewhere close to the frame or on the frame if possible. And what I'm going to do for now, until, until I remove my bumper and put the new bumper on, I'm going to ground to where the bumper mounts to the frame. You got a nice solid bolt that you can ground with. It's easy to access and I'm just going to slam it right there and it'll work great. Now all we have left is to cut and put a connector onto this end of the wire here and connect it to our distribution block. Now this is where it can get a little bit tricky because I'm going to be soldering inside my vehicle. I have a habit of making messes. So I'm going to try to keep things as clean as possible. What works really good are those little disposable like roaster pans. You can put it underneath it and then you, gotta, don't, and then you don't got to worry about any hot solder falling onto your carpet. Now all I gotta do is connect it into my bus part here. Now it's really important that your battery is disconnected in this process because uh, right now I would short out the whole system. All right, now all that's left is to test it out. Works great. Hopefully you liked this video. If you did like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. As always, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.
You know what I forgot? Yep. Shrink tubing. That's right. I got a piece that's big enough that'll go over the whole thing, and then it'll shrink down good.